Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of uh, discussion going on about education at the moment. The question is that, are we doing good in Finland? This is a main crucial question at the moment. It is not because of the yesterday's uh, PISA results. It's more about the question that are we in the right tracks? Because we have known already for quite a long time that the performance of the students in Finland, it is not anymore so high that we used to, to, to know. And the problem is that we have seen that many students, not just high performers or low performers, are losing their skills, but it's more about uh, to admit that students are losing their motivation to show actually their skills. So we are faced with the question that what's happening with the generation of ours which is now in the school. In fact, it is a question that which is more complicated because it would be so simple to say that sorry to say that they are not so clever than the earlier generations. That would be really, really easy to say. But these problems are more multi, uh, multi-problematic. So there are no only simple answer as a politician that how we should think about when we think about the question that are we investing to education. Why it is so important to Finnish people? In fact, our education system is based on few values, which is good to understand before getting and reaching the point. In fact, we all believe that the education is based on trust. It's based on trust in such a way that we definitely believe that we made the right decisions in late 60s. 68 we had politicians sitting in the closed cabinets and they made a deal that we have to change our path. We have to make a new school system, basic education, and it was born in 70s when we launched it, starting from the different areas and so on, made it to have a whole Finland using the new school, new basic school, which definitely have granted records everywhere, saying, you know, that we made something really, really nice. We were very surprised in the early 2000s when we noticed that our school is one of the best ones in the world. We were very, as modest persons, we were very delighted to hear that and we were wondering that why we are doing so good. But we made the right decisions, political decisions, what kind of school we want to have. And because we could count on our way, ourselves from the left to right wing as politicians to make up such a school system, which is actually based on equality and equity, so that we admit that we are such a small country, only 5.4 million people, we cannot invest to high performers only. It is impossible because, you know, we need to have whole potential which we are using. So we can't have leftovers because we are so few. So therefore we have to take care of uh, the whole nation in the way that everyone's know-how is respected. As much we can get know-how out, better outcome it will be for society. And in fact it is, because if you look at the last PIAC results in five weeks ago or something like that, if you look at the results, we were second ones in each uh, measured uh, area. And Japanese were before us in literacy and uh, maths. 
But when it comes to problem decision, uh, the problem uh, solving with a computer, so they sank. And because Swedish were better ones in problem sol solving with a computer, so, but they couldn't perform into other areas. So we could say that we have most skilled people in the world compared with that uh, PIAC results. What comes to adult skills, so something what we have been doing almost in the last 50 years is working because our adults are so skilled compared with the other nations. So we can say that the Finnish school system is carrying on in the right way and we have a full trust by the citizens that we're doing something good. And it's not based only for such a principle we once deal, we, we deal together. But it's also based on trust because we believe that the teachers are the crucial part of the whole picture. Because in fact, we definitely believe that we have to have most skilled teachers, master degree teachers. And we believe that with such a teachers with high competence, we can benefit more. So we trust teachers. We trust also students, because we definitely believe that they should do, not just to sit in the school, they should have also free time. A lot of people don't agree about it. I know there are a lot of other ways to do it. But we have always thought that less hours can be even better. And it is sometimes very hard to to say that that would be a good principle compared with the other countries which are performing very well in PISA. With the hours they ask their students to be committed to school. But that can be challenging us today very, very differently than ever before. Because in fact, school have lost credibility among the youngsters. And we have seen it now because there are internet, there are so many hobbies, there are social media. What was the social media and internet, you know, in the past days? When I was in the school, school was my internet, school was my social media, school was honestly said almost my hobby too. Because, you know, today we have so huge variety of hobbies. So we are challenged by young people's activities, what they're doing in their free time. School is not anymore a place where we share everything. It is not the only way to distribute knowledge. And this is something which is challenging the modern democracies. I definitely believe if you look at what happened in Australia, for example, what happened in some of the European countries, now, with the PISA results. What have actually happened already in the Nordic countries is the fact that something is going on in the modern democracies because we have lost sort of a credibility of the school or let's say the meaning of the school in young people's minds. And I think that is part of the problem today when we look at what happens in the European countries compared with the performing in the school. Ladies and gentlemen, I definitely believe that with the value of trust, we always have valued our students that they perform their best. They're very skilled, and I definitely believe that they're skilled and they perform their best at the moment. And in fact, it is a good result. If you look at the PISA results in Finland, fifth, sixth, and twelfth place. So compared with all Asian countries right after that, being best in the OECD countries and being almost, let's say, almost best in the OECD countries and the, the almost best in the European countries, I think that we're doing still good. But money doesn't fix anything, even though we are spending less money more or less than average OECD countries spending for the education system. 
But still I believe that the money doesn't fix today's problems. I definitely believe that it is a challenge also for society. Because in fact, think about the attitudes of tomorrow, today's society. <coughs> How many of us actually, truly in our hearts, are supporting our kids that school is necessary? School is the only way to achieve something better in their life. We already know here in Finland that we are so equal that everybody can get to the university free of charge. So it's only up to you if I'm motivated or not. And how do we keep up the motivation in today's world because we see that there are so many other factors which are challenging us. So I believe that it's also the question in modern societies that have we actually forgotten that school is actually so necessary. It used to be when we were kids. We take it as granted. And that leads us in the situation that our attitudes, unfortunately, can be one of the problem. Because in fact, these are results and some of the national service we have had in less than in two months time, says here in Finland that these uh, school positive attitudes can be the only heritage we actually leave for the second generation. It is amazing that not just that actually the parents who are having a higher degree, the university level degree, they have most positive school attitudes, positive attitudes to school. But almost other people who don't have a higher education, they have lost their positive attitudes towards school. So this is also the challenge for Finnish society, that are we ready to support by our attitudes, our kids, performing in the school. And this is a one thing what challenge, not just us, but I think it is challenging the Nordic countries, it is challenging many European countries. And if you are not challenged, you will be definitely by the modern society. If we lose the positive attitudes towards school in the society, if we don't care because we think that we're doing so good, so then we are asking what we can do better. So ladies and gentlemen, we try to do better now. Yesterday, uh, I said that we can't face the fact that our students don't performance, perform so good anymore. And I think some of the reasons are relying inside the school and outside of the school. I already explained what are the reasons outside of the school. Let's get inside of the school now. So I think teachers' education have to face tomorrow's challenges already today. But I think that is not the biggest challenge what we have. Our teachers' education have been quite modern and they face <coughs> quite easily changes and they adapt. But I think the problem is today that our kids are very different kids than in early 2000. Because when these PISA results were gained, we had the one third part out of the picture than when we were second ones in the early 2000. And same thing is that the world, the, the environment where school were working were very, very different during those days than compared with the situation today. So what I'm trying to say is that we have seen already that because we try to make sure that teacher is not having too many students in the classroom, that it is possible to support each individual 
and support the skills of the each, in each individual. So in fact, we should make sure that we have enough small school classes. It is not easy at all. I have lost a bit of my voice. It's better now for almost three weeks and I was supposed to be in the sick leave or whatever it is, you know, just to stay home, not talk for the week. But I couldn't do it last week because we made a big decisions, budget decisions last week. I had to be at the place, make sure that they don't cut my money, you know. So uh, they didn't, the other politicians, they didn't cut my money to make sure that we support municipal cities that we have in our small school classes. So we have doubled the money during the two years time to make sure that we have enough support for the each kid. That is the only way to go over the challenges we are having. The other challenge is that the schools, their, uh, their environment where they are working is rapidly changing. The segregation is hitting the schools very hardly today. You can't really see it still in the PISA or the National Service. You have to go closer inside of the different towns and look at what happens there. Especially schools which are located in the suburbs. They are facing different problems than schools which are located in the middle of the town. Why? Because they have a lot more immigrants. They have a lot more lower education level of the parents who are living in the area and they are having a lot more unemployment. And these are the reasons which are challenging schools. And we don't want to let it be like that. We want to support all the schools, but we want to support those schools even more which are challenging uh, themselves in the surroundings where they are working. So therefore they need to have a lot more money that they can survive. We don't want to have that one school is better than the other one because when you get started with that, you end up in the big, big problems because then the area will get such a strong stigma. House prices are getting down, no one wants to move there, schools are st stigma disaster, game is over. So we want to make sure that all the schools are in the same level. That has been the crucial part of the Finnish education system. And so far it is supported by the all political groups too. So the surroundings where the schools are, they challenge these schools and we can see the differences already between schools. They can be even between town, inside of the different areas in town. Inside of the town the differences can be even in the learning results, two and a half years. So you can imagine what kind of big thing it can be. And even between the students then, the differences in learning have been raising so that even the, the, fee, the one five percent of the highest performance, performers and the five, five percent of the lowest performance, their differences can be over seven years. Think about it. And if you say that terrible, it is terrible, but think about the PISA results yesterday said the differences between students and schools are the second lowest in the whole OECD country here in Finland. So think about the matters the other countries are facing. So this is actually the thing that we have woke, we have woken up to face these differences. So let's get still finally in the classroom. If we know that to improve the math results, we have to do better with this student's motivation. So how can we do it? Because they are not going to show their performance if they're not motivated. So if you look at the math results. The biggest problem is that our youngsters are not really motivated to study mathematics. In fact, girls think that it is important. Boys not, not that much. 
But boys used to be better in mathematics and natural sciences. But yesterday we found out that even girls are now better in already last time in national uh, sciences today with the mathematics too. So what happens with the boys? I'm very worried about the Finnish boys. They're not motivated at all. So how can we motivate them? My brother's son, when I was, I used to be a minister of ICT and the uh, <coughs> communication and also housing, sort of, uh, we are a mix of everything with the two different ministries. But uh, I changed, I was appointed to this desk in May. And when I started with the new portfolio, my brother's uh, son, I met him after two days. And then he, 11 year old one, very, very smart boy, he wants to perform. He didn't want to do that earlier, but now he wants. So um, he had the small paper when he met me and he said that, we, we, wrote, we wrote you a paper on the school, in the school on Friday when we knew that you're gonna be a new, new school minister. And then I said, that, thank you. Then he said that this is your agenda. I had a five <laughs> things there. The school have wrote me a letter that what kind of things I have to improve. You know, chili con carne every Friday. <laughs> I said that, impossible. It's, it's out of my hands. I said that, go to blame, you know, to the school, you know, rector and the kitchen there. So that is the way to fix it. But there was a four other items for me. I don't get into details, but I only, only mention one thing. He said to me that why you can't fix it, that we could use every kind of games to learn mathematics. Like we do in the weekends when we meet, we play games. I'm a naughty one, I play games with him. Learning games. <coughs> And he said that why we can't give all the other kids to do the same. So I'm asking you guys, why can't we leave these 11 year old ones who are digi natives? They are born to be digital. When you ask them, when they get to the school in the early morning, when you ask them to close the phones and open them, they feel that they are like in the airplane whole day along, you know. <laughs> Welcome on board, close all your electronic devices. And then after seven hours, it's time to release you again in the open space. They are not born like that. They are born with all the devices. I know that it's really hard to say it. You can imagine what kind of uh, messages I have from the older generation who have been in the older generation school. They think about that I'm crazy because I'm leave, letting all the devices to come into school. It is not sinking our school system because we don't have digitality at all and we got already in such a position. So, so this is not sinking, that is not letting us sink a lot more, but it might raise us a bit, in fact, because Finland is one of the countries who haven't really digitalized school. We have all the tools. Amazing we have all the tools. Because the older families, even the poorest ones, they are very digital. But schools are not. But we have exceptions. We have a very great schools, which are using even electronic uh, digital materials and so on. But we have most of the school, schools which are not very digital. So I believe that that is the only way to notice that the generation is different than into, in the early 2000s. I'm sorry to say, but that is the only way to challenge ourselves to, to face the phenomena that ICT is part of the schoolwork. This is the rapid learning, quick learning, fast learning, but I definitely admit that that is that is only a tool, it's not going to solve anything. It is just a making different methods available. So we have to do even more. 
So in fact, what else we can do? We have to get the motivation back to students. And I think it is not just the Finnish phenomena. I think that we have to challenge our students. Probably it is so that it has been too easy, honestly said. We come to hang around in school. Who is actually challenging our students nowadays? Who is asking them to go in the uncomfortable area? Because that is the only place where you actually learn something. So should we actually sometimes put our students in the areas where you have to challenge yourself? And probably we don't challenge our youngsters too much today. But I'm not saying that that would mean that school cannot be fun. School must be fun, but it doesn't have to be always comfortable. That is a very different thing. So what I'm saying is we have to change the pedagogical attitudes also. We have to understand that we have to give feeling that school is fun. It's great to come. It's great to learn. It is great to feel that today I'm going to know something new. How many of us ask every day that how are our kids, what they have learned today? Name five things what you learned today. We are very satisfied to hear even one thing what they have learned in the school. I even try to learn by myself at least one thing in the day. So I think that they should learn at least five things in the day. So we should challenge our students to feel that it's great to, to learn. And I think we are missing a bit that part. The th another thing is that we are challenged by the fact that school is not really a pleasant place to be, unfortunately to say. Our kids are thinking that it is not that pleasant anymore. And we can say that lazy ones. But it's not solving anything. The fact is that if they feel that it's not a pleasant place to be, so then we have to make sure that the community in the school is more pleasant in the coming years. So the community skills, being part of the society, being part of the community, being part of something, being meaningful, that's something what we should teach in the school. We should get the feeling that I have a very good self-image. I know that I'm good in one thing. And school is teaching me that, hey, you, Maya, you are good in this one. And hey, you, Peter, you are good in that one. And everybody feels that they have a meaning of life. And a lot of our kids don't feel that they are needed. I'm sorry to say that, you know, if you look at what happens in society all over the Europe, there are a lot of young people who are unemployment, un unemployed. A lot of their relatives are unemployed. We are talking about the economical crisis everywhere. It is quite desperate to be a youngster. What for you go to school? Because probably you end up unemployed anyway. Is that the picture many of our students are having? What is the meaning of the life to, to be in the school? So we should give them meaning to be in the school. And I think these can be some issues which can motivate our students. There are a lot more too. So we need to have a slow learning and a fast learning. We need to face ourselves that we cannot go anymore with the used today's school methods to tomorrow's challenges. So in fact, I believe that it is good to see that we cannot just stand here and think that, you know, we are so good, that let's be here, you know. Everybody else is going to pass us if we don't run even quicker when we are doing good. So therefore, we have to run even quicker. Not just to say that we have a now, today we're going to have a very bad school because we, just today we got a bit nasty, bizarre results. You know, life is not so short, you know, that we should make such a conclusion with so short time. We can say that we have a window open now to save 
the new generation, which is definitely feeling bad because they don't want to perform so good. So I believe definitely in the end that Finnish students are very bright ones, but they don't want to show it for a reason or two. Let's find out how they would like to show their performance so we can be very satisfied. And I'm very lucky to say that luckily only the national or international service are not deciding which school is good one, which is not. So therefore all matters, do we have a national citizen support for the school we have at the moment? And like I said, we have a basic value trust and we still trust in Finnish education system. We trust our teachers, we trust our students. I, I definitely believe that that is the only right track to go on. Thank you.